Hi folks, Geeky Teach here, friendly admin here on Fractured Earth. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the mods we have available here on the server. So whether you are new to mods entirely or just to some of the mods we have available here on Fractured Earth, I'm going to take you through a quick overview of what we have and some of the basics on how to use it. So stick around and we'll kick things off and get started in a moment. All right, your first stop on any of our maps should probably be one of our community centers. There's a community center on every map and probably about 95% of them are currently our lovely Pokemon characters. So if you are unsure if you have found our community center, if it looks like a Pokemon, you are probably in the right spot. All of our community centers have a variety of tools for our users, and one of the reasons we recommend starting at a community center are the freebie boxes. Every community center is going to have a selection of free items, teleporter remotes, some shiny items for tracking shiny dinos, soul guns, and soul balls to get you started. Some of the other useful things you'll find in the community center are some of our basic workbenches that you may need. Um, everything from the tech stove to a chem bench, a replicator, and just about everything in between. So all of our major tools that you might not have unlocked yet will be available here for you to use. Most of our community centers also have a space for people to log off if you are away from base and need a space to crash out while you log off for a while, here's a place to do so. This is not meant as a long-term option. We do recommend everybody create their own base to log off on, but if you just need a quick place to crash if you need to log off in a hurry or you don't have a base built on the map quite yet, you have a safe space to log off. In all of our CCs, you're also going to find some more freebie boxes. These are player donated freebie boxes. So the contents will vary from time to time. You should find a free dino box in every CC where you and other players can leave dinos you don't necessarily need as a gift for other players. These can vary wildly from the very common to the very rare, so you never quite know what you're going to get. We do ask that folks be reasonable when taking dinos from these. Please don't take every single dino out of the box. Take what you need and leave some for others. There's usually also some fridges where you might find eggs that people have picked up along the map, sometimes fertilized, sometimes not, as well as other perishable items. You can also usually find boxes for things like free skins, tributes and boss items, chibis, tools, armor and weapons, and a variety of other things. Our community centers also have drop-off boxes. If you are a Patreon member or you are ordering something through the admin, you will receive a box in one of the community centers where you can pick up any items that you may be receiving. In our community centers, you'll also find things like our converters, which we'll talk about shortly. And each community center should also have a teleport and a transmitter that are available for players to use. The last and most important thing on the community centers are the rewards vaults. Each community center will have at least one reward vault. They look like these little vaults stuck into the wall. And when you open it up, you want to look for the reward menu down here at the bottom. And then on the left, you'll see a wide variety of options. Not all of these are available for players, but you will find some very useful things. For example, under dinos, we have some of our dinos of the month and different animals that you can purchase using our in-game currency of arc bars. Arc bars are earned just by spending time in the game. You can also get them as rewards for different events and find them in certain drops such as cave drops um, here on Rag. One of the best places to go is the Ice Queen Cave 
and the uh, the Golem Cave to find some good cave drops with arc bars. There are also free items. So if you look under free, we tend to have a couple of different options. You get a free stat wipe and a free mind wipe option in here should you need them. There are different kits that you can purchase. So let's say you are looking for those elusive plant species R seeds. There's a pack that you can purchase here along with many other items. For brand new members, we recommend going to Starter, and you'll see two options, Starter, Griffin, and Just Plain Starter. If you go to Starter, you're going to see you have a whole bunch of different options in here. You're going to get a campfire, your first soul ball, some stone building materials to make your first temporary base, some tools to get you started, a bed, and a free Griffin along with a dino tracker. We recommend you start out with this one rather than just Starter Griffin, as this one gives you a lot more options. So don't forget, check out the Rewards Vaults. The Starter Pack is free. There are occasionally other free items available, and other items can be purchased using our in-game currency of Arc Bars. Next up, let's take a look at our teleporter. If you're coming from console or non-modded arc, you may be used to the overwhelmingly large teleporter that is part of the arc engrams. Thankfully, we have access to the much smaller and much more useful awesome teleporter. This is an awesome teleporter. Um, you can create them in your inventory with the engram. And you can also pick up a free teleporter remote at any community center. Your teleporter is useful in an awful lot of ways. Obviously, it can be used to teleport. So if I put my remote away here for a moment and I choose my teleport menu, I get a list of all of the different teleports that I can go to. I'm in list mode right now. You can also use map mode if you're trying to get to a specific area of the map. And any of these will take you to the teleport you choose. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose, let's see, I'm going to pop over to this one here. You can see I get a little teleport around me. One thing you want to be careful of if you are teleporting near any Thames, make sure they are not inside that teleport bubble unless you want them to come with you. It's really easy to accidentally lose a Thames because it got sucked up in your teleport bubble and you didn't realize it. Your teleport remote works pretty much the same as a teleport pad, only it gives you more options if you're not near an actual teleport pad. From anywhere on the map, you can pull out your teleport remote and go in and find where you want to teleport to. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my little demo area right away. All right. So teleporter remote and the awesome teleporter, very handy. Another useful feature of your teleporter remote is that if you use your alternative click, you're going to come up with a list of any of your tames that are out that have a dino tracker in them. So if you lose a tame or you're trying to find a specific one, you can go ahead and find them on this list provided they have a dino tracker in them. Selecting one from this list will teleport them directly to you. Another great feature of the awesome teleporter is if you happen to die while out and about on the map, there is no longer any need to go searching for that green beam that marks your corpse. Instead, go to any open teleporter and you want to access the radial menu and find retrieve corpse. 
This will go ahead, and if you have a corpse or a death bag anywhere on the map, it will bring it back to your inventory automatically. You can also find your dinos through this radial menu as well. There is a Find Dinos option up here that is the same as the option on your teleporter remote. And again, any dinos with a dino tracker in them, you'll be able to find and teleport directly to you. We do ask that all teleporters, whether they are public or private, be named with either your tribe name or your character name so that when the admins are doing map sweeps, you don't end up getting your teleporter red gunned because it is not labeled correctly. Next up, let's take a look at this little iPad on a stick. You'll often see us in Discord talking about using the iPad on a stick. That's just our name for the converter. With the converter, you can transfer items that you normally would not be able to take between maps much, much more easily. In here, you can open up the inventory and see that you have a couple of different options. Artifacts, element, packages, tributes, and trophies. If you are carrying element with you, element shards, element dust, and you would like to transfer them between maps, you can dump any of those items here into the converter, go to element, and change it into different types of containers. Now some of these containers do need to be learned in your engrams, but they are very, very useful once you've learned them. Each one has different options. Uh, for example, this one is a 25 element container. This will hold 25 pieces of element. When you transfer and you're ready to use it, just select it in your inventory and use it and it will unpack the element so that you will have it in your inventory ready to go. You can also use these for conversions. This will convert dust to element. This one converts shards to element. There is a larger element container that holds a 100 element at a time. A shard container. A single element container. And a shards to element container. So if you need to transfer element between servers, this is what you want to come to. Artifacts can also be packaged up this way. You can package up multiple artifacts to transfer across servers. And if you are on the hunt for artifacts or boss tributes, we've made it very easy for you to find them. If you are out hunting dinos, look for the woolly rhinos. When you kill a woolly rhino, you will automatically receive a random assortment of artifacts and boss fight tribute items. You can also find some of the rarer tribute items in our green drops. Tributes will package up all of the boss fight tributes, so you can collect items on one map, take them to another map, and use them there. You can also package up most of the boss fight trophies, the heads and other items, to take with you from map to map. And if you are planning a boss fight and want to have everything ready to go, packages are the way to go. With this, you can select Alpha, Beta, Gamma, or any of the Extinction Titans. And for the different maps and the different fights, it'll tell you exactly what you need. Put all of that in the inventory, and it will all package it up for you into a nice little box. Take it with you to wherever you're going to do the boss fight. Use it and it will open up and put those items back in your inventory so you are instantly ready to go for any boss fight. One of the next tools that is extremely useful to anybody playing on the server is our awesome spyglass. If you are coming from console or, again, non-modded arc, you're used to the regular spyglass, which gives you minimal information and lets you see things at a distance. The awesome spyglass, which, again, you can pick up for free in our community centers, is a much more powerful tool. 
when I enable my awesome teleporter, it's going to give me data about anything that I pointed at, including my tames. So I can take a look at any of my tames, see their colors, their stats, their health, their food and torpor. And more useful for taming, if I'm looking at a wild dino, it will also give me all of the pertinent stats on that particular dino as well as exactly what I need to go ahead and tame it. So if you are out hunting dinos, this makes it much easier to find ones with the levels and stats that you are looking for. The other handy feature of this is if you look up in the top left hand corner of my screen, the awesome spyglass gives you a permanent um, GPS coordinates so that wherever you go on the arc, you always know where you are without having to pull out a separate device and try and read the coordinates. This makes it much easier to find your way around and be able to tell other people how to find you. Awesome Spyglass, definitely one of the most useful tools here on Fractured Earth. Another essential tool that you can find for free at the community centers um, is your soul gun and of course the accompanying soul balls that come along with it. A soul ball is kind of just what it sounds like. It is a little ball item, um, looks like this, and it works very similar to a pokeball. You go up to a tame. <coughs> select it and it will ball it up for you. These work just like the cryopods in regular arc, but so much better. Your gun will also allow you to ball up tames from a distance. So I can just go ahead and package up any of those into soul balls. When you look at a soul ball in your inventory, again, it's going to give you a whole lot of information about your tame. Soul balls are fantastic. They never expire or run out of charge, so there is no need to put them in a cryo fridge like you would with a cryopod. They last forever. They cost um, just some crystal to create, so they are very easy to make as well. Any tames in a soul ball will regain health while they are soul balled up. They will gain levels while they are in soul balls. And perfect for those who are breeding, you can soul ball up a baby. It will grow to maturity within the soul ball and it will automatically imprint any babies for you. So it makes it very, very useful, much better than our cryopods. Going along with that, we have the soul terminal. Soul terminals are great for storing your soul balls. You can put in any of your dinos into the soul terminal. It stores them for you. You can search very easily for any souls that you might have and be able to find them quickly. So soul terminal, definitely a great way to store that. If you're not a fan of the modern look of this, if you go into its radio menu, go to options. On the side here, you should see modern mesh. If I select that, I can change it to primitive, which is this, or a third option, which is basic. It looks like a lovely little miniature vault. Our next item is our tech transmitter. You should find a tech transmitter at every community center and they are useful for pretty much the regular tech transmitter job of being able to travel to other servers. You can also um, launch boss fights from some of them, upload data. However, for most server transfers, using the teleporter is the easiest way to go. If you access its inventory, you have the travel to another server option. 
But one thing that these transmitters are really useful for is if you are looking for a particular dyno on a map. If you go in to the radio menu, there is a dyno scan option. With dyno scan, it's going to pull up the dyno scanner. You can either type in what you're looking for in the filter or scroll down through the list. You will see a list of all of that particular type of animal, the level, and the basic coordinates of where you can find it. So if you are looking for that one special tame, your dino scanner is going to be very handy for that. One of my favorite things about Modded Arc is the huge variety of dinos that we have access to. In addition to the regular vanilla dinos, there are so many cool dino mods out there, and I want to share some of my favorites from Fractured Earth. Top of that list is the ever popular shiny dinos. You will, on any map, find a variety of shiny dinos wandering around. They range from just the kind of basic fun and colorful looking ones like this bright rainbow dire wolf to the more exotic like a holographic triceratops or this double shiny royal tech manic armor. This fellow is a frozen taser and he will zap things nearby with his taser ability periodically. You can know a shiny dino by the rainbow orbs floating around it. You also, with shiny dinos, get a couple extra level boosts on it, and many people collect them both for their cool abilities and looks, but also for those levels which will carry on into breeding. Some of the other cool dinos you can find, um, with the Crystal Isles mod, you can find an assortment of liquefied dinos, like this liquefied wyvern. And then we have some more basic additions. There are lots and lots of cool new dinos that are not part of regular ARC that you can find on modded ARC. One of my absolute favorites, um, along with the dragons themselves, are the special wyverns. This is a viper tooth wyvern, which is smaller than a regular wyvern and very similar to a poison wyvern in a lot of ways couple reasons why I really love these guys. Number one, their maneuverability is awesome. They fly very similar to a Tapahara or a Griffin. You can fly forwards, backwards, side to side, up and down. They are amazingly maneuverable. The other really awesome feature about these Viper Tooth Wyverns is that they are the perfect taming companion. Their poison breath that they spit out deals torpor. So instead of having to worry about having a bow and arrow or anything like that, finding trank darts or shocking trank darts, I can use my viper tooth to take out just about anything. So I'm going to go ahead and knock some of these guys out here. You can see how easy it is. With my awesome spyglass, I can keep an eye on their torpor. Sorry, Dodos, you're going down. So now I have my Dodos all knocked out, ready to tame. So much easier than dealing with bows and arrows, rifles, anything like that. So f your best taming companion, go out, find yourself a viper tooth wyvern. You will not regret it at all. All right, it is time for one of my other favorite things about modded arc, and that is the building mods. I love building and I hate being stuck with some of the boring options that regular art comes with. 
thankfully we have some amazing building mods including this one that I'm on right now this is a floating platforms mod which has a variety of different floating platforms that you can place anywhere up in the air on the ground even down in the water for a water pen and they have some really awesome features like these tunnels that'll let me get down to the different areas that I have so now let's take a look at some of these cool building materials that we have um, pretty much all of our maps have the castles keeps and forts mod which gives you several different building options this is an example of the villager mod um, this is again part of castles keeps and forts the villager look is kind of this clay or adobe look mixed with wood and there's a lot of great options within this this does not show anywhere near all of the building options but it's just meant to give you a quick look at what the different pieces look like many of the pieces within this building mod have variants and options that you can change so I can change up my windows a bit here I can change up my walls and it allows for so many different building options all of these pieces can be painted as well giving you a whole lot of freedom when it comes to building if you like castles this is the keep section of the mod this is more of a stone castle like feel and again just a quick look at some of the different looks of the mod here for our structure walls we pretty much can do cut stone or field stone we have options within our windows and so on um, even our little half walls can be changed up a little bit change that one to our uh, field stone and back to cut stone our third option is the settler tier and this is a more rustic wood look I personally like using this for building stables and similar structures and again as with the others a lot of options within it one of my favorites in this particular mod is the sci-fi version this is more of a composite look using all sorts of different variety of items we have full window walls here regular walls these nifty sliding doors and it's a much more industrial sci-fi look again everything can be painted there are structure variants that you can switch between and we have a color profile and the color profile will let you go in and change the look of different parts of your items so I can change the coloring a bit there and there is also a um, a cosmetic gun tool that comes with this mod that you can use to just shoot at different pieces of the build and cycle through structures quickly next on the list is SS glass we have a large variety of SS options um, SS replaces a lot of the basic vanilla engrams and we recommend sticking with just the SS engrams not the vanilla because it's going to give you a lot more flexibility so these are SS glass foundations and SS glass walls and let's take a look at some of the cool things we can do with this I love working with these glass foundations they have a lot of options so first thing I'm going to do is go in and I'm going to choose change transparency 
In here, I can make it opaque so that it is not kind of clear looking down. I can adjust opacity levels here, and I'm going to go ahead and leave this one as opaque. Again, this can be painted over and change the color. Get very creative and colorful with these. One of my favorite things to do with these, um, particularly if I have a build that overhangs, is to use these to make kind of invisible foundations. If I go in and this time go to select model, I can go in and choose which side or sides I want to show up. So I can tell it I just want a particular side to be showing or one of my favorites, no sides at all. No sides turns that foundation invisible. It's still there, but it looks like it's not at all. This makes it really fun to make floating builds that look like they're not supported at all. You can do the same thing with the glass walls. They do give you some good options. If I go under change transparency here, I have my opaque option. I have my opacity slider, which will let me change how dark my window is. But it also has one-way glass options. So one way in to out. I'm going to go ahead and select that. From this direction it looks like nothing has changed, but if I come around to the other side I can see that this glass wall is now mirrored on one side. I can see out, others can't see in. With this I also have some very handy tools I can use. If I hold N on my keyboard, it's going to bring up my multi-tool. And I have my model selector. I also have a transparency selector down here. I'm going to start with my transparency selector. And when I alt click on that, it's going to save this particular model. And now if I regular click and shoot at these walls, it's going to automatically apply the same transparency. I can also, just like with the foundations, come in here to model, choose my sides. I'm going to go with no sides for this. And I'm going to grab my transparency gun again. Um, this time, when I hold down N, I want to get the model selector. And with the model selector, I'm going to select my one with no border and then fire at the others to go ahead and get rid of them. That glass wall is still there, but it is completely invisible, which again allows for some cool builds. This SS glass can also be used for making greenhouses, gives you great greenhouse efficiency. And speaking of greenhouses, these are two items I consider essential for any greenhouse. First up, we have the SS Farmer. This guy here is going to collect any poop from nearby animals and give it to a dung beetle if you have it. He can also produce fertilizer in his own inventory if you don't have any dung beetles. Next up is our SS Gardener, and what this character is going to do, they are going to collect any items from your crops, including seeds and the R seed meat plants. So once you have it set up, put one of these folks up, activate them, and they will automatically harvest your crops for you. I also like to pair the SS item collector with them. What this will do is collect any poop, um, dropped items, owl pellets, anything like that from nearby players and dinos, and you can set it to automatically distribute to characters like the farmer, the gardener, gotchas, and so on. Moving along, we have the popular Jurassic Arc mod. This does not have a lot of building materials, but what it does have is pretty cool. If you want to go the whole Jurassic Park theme, 
you get this lovely Jurassic Park dino gate, extra large gate, and electric fences. This is the regular sized electric fence, and there is also a behemoth fence as well. This does require power, um, and it works just like a regular electric fence. So those are some of the awesome building mods that are available here on Fractured Earth. If you're interested in building on the water, you have a couple of options. First off, this thing I'm running around on right now is part of the platforms mod that we mentioned earlier. And this is the water pen. This makes it super easy to go ahead and create a pen to store and breed water dinos. They are safely trapped inside of here. And for you to get out, if you go to the radial menu, you can open and close the floor in order to bring yourself and your tames in and out. Great new option for water bases and keeping water dinos. The second option is the SS um, Ocean Foundations. This is the metal version. They do have, I believe, a wood version as well. And these kind of do away with the need for the original ocean platforms. With the ARC version of ocean platforms, you were limited to that kind of basic square shape. And then you had to go and fill in all of the interior with ceilings if you wanted to create a walkable or buildable area. With the SS Ocean Foundations, there's no more need for that. These are the size and shape of regular foundations, and you can go in and lay them in any pattern that you want. So you are not limited to that boring square anymore. They're also completely solid, so you can walk on them, and you can lay foundations right on top of them, making it very easy to build using these. Um, I believe ceilings will also attach to them, um, probably walls as well, but this makes it very, very simple and easy to build a custom water area. Just as a reminder, um, on Fractured Earth, you are limited to one main base and one small water pen. Um, that water pen is to be used for storing and breeding water dinos if it is just like an outpost from your main base. You can make your main base on the water as well, but again, that means that is now your main base, not just a water outpost. Let's take a look at some of the other advantages of mods. First of all, stacking foundations. In order to stack foundations, you must be using either the SS version or the Castles, Keeps, and Forts mod. Um, the vanilla arc structures do not stack, but any of the others will. This is very handy if you are building on uneven ground, and you can stack the foundations pretty much to any height you need. Makes it very, very easy and allows you more freedom when building. The next thing to look at is storage. Um, beyond the basics of the wooden storage box and the vaults, there are some tech options that are very useful as well. First up, we have dedicated storage. And while this is similar to the regular vanilla storage, the SS version gives you a few more options. Most noticeably, my favorite, the SS dedicated storage intake. Once you have your dedicated storages set up with your materials in them, all you need to do is place one of these somewhere at your base. I usually put mine by the front entrance or the teleporter. And when you come back from gathering resources, I have some wood and some fiber in my inventory here. I have my daddy boxes set up. All I'm gonna do is come here and select deposit and it's automatically going to send those items to the correct Deddy boxes. Really, really simple and saves a ton of time on organizing. 
Next to the deadies, we have what look like almost a smaller version of the foundation. These are tech storage boxes. These are kind of similar in size to the deadie boxes, and they snap to each other the same way the deadies do. But unlike the deadies, which are restricted to a single item of material, these you can put multiple items in. So I could dump anything in my inventory in there, and it will store it for me. These will hold 500 items, giving you a ton of storage. Another nice feature of these is if you go into their radial menu, you can rename them. And once you've renamed them, go back to that radial menu and set name as label, and you will have everything labeled neatly for you. One last thing about our Deddy storages, when they are receiving power, they also provide refrigeration. So you can store items that have spoil timers in these and it will refrigerate them as well. Taking a look at some other utilities that we have, I have a couple of things set up here. Um, beginning of the game, you're probably not going to have access to a tech generator right away. So when you start out with the electrical generator, we have a few other options. I have a simple one set up here, and I have two different fridges running. The first one is our vanilla fridge, the basic one that comes through ARC, and the second one is the SS version. Now you'll notice that the basic refrigerator has an inventory of 80, and the SS version has an inventory of 100. So right there, you've got a lot of extra space. The other thing to notice is that with the SS version, you don't have these janky power cords coming down through the air to whatever it is you're trying to power. I personally prefer the nice clean look of no power lines, uh, and so the SS version is really good for that. Even if you are using the vanilla version, there are some nifty features we have here with our radial menu. So I can come in and I'm going to go to my generator and on the radial menu, I'm going to choose hide wires. That's going to hide those electrical cables. And then I'm gonna come up here to my outlet. Your outlet has a couple of options. Um, first of all, if you are okay seeing the outlet, you can leave it visible. Um, and you can also hide the sparks. So, oh, I don't wanna see these annoying sparks. I can get rid of them. I can also hide the electrical outlet completely. And if it's connected to anything that has wires, I can hide nearby wires and get rid of those as well. Very, very simple. For water, there is no more need to either A, make sure you're living near a water source, or B, put together a long, long, complicated connection of um, pipes to get to a water source. All you need is the SS intake. This is an SS metal water intake. This does not need to be connected to a water source. This is just placed here. It is not connected to water at all, but it will automatically produce water for you. This makes it much easier and cleaner when you are trying to set up water access, whether it is for yourself or for different items that require water to run like the cooking pots. If you're a builder, you're going to love some of the decor mods that we have. We have several of Eco's mods, which are some of the best for adding decor and other items. This is Eco's garden decor, and this is the Eco in Wonderland landscape table. They require very simple everyday items, so I have this one stocked with a few already. And if you go in, you can see there's a bunch of different items already in each section. So I can add a bush, we've got fences, different types of fountains. Let's go ahead and make a fancy fountain here. Some benches under furniture. 
different types of lights. I'm a big fan of the ground lights for lighting things up. You've got planters and pots, some different skins, some structures. One of my favorite things is you can create um, foundations that are made out of water, made out of um, kind of dirt here, and also grass. So I'm going to grab a couple of the water foundations. There's a little gnome home. There's a pergola. Pergola is a nice one. You've got ivy here, stained glass for different structures if you want something fancier, and topiary. So let me find where's my little friend, the, the llama here. So all of these items that I just created can be placed. There's my fountain. My little pergola. And you can also add things inside here. This works like a foundation, so you can put down tables, chairs, and other items. Maybe I want to add a little bush there. We'll put our topiary llama down. Add some ground lights here. Light everything up purple in the night. And then, last but not least, my water foundations. Now the fun thing with these, you can go in and choose show fish. These are a little too deep right now to see them, but I believe, is it going to let me stack them? Sometimes it'll let you stack them depending on where you're placing them. But being able to show fish when they are um, a little more not quite so sunken into the ground here, you'll be able to see little koi fish swimming around inside them as well. These can all be picked up at any point, and you can move them around and put them wherever. This makes it fun to have a little stream running through the middle of your base, and you can walk on it just like you would a normal foundation. If we go over to the landscape table, this one has more decorative items for landscaping. There's different kinds of crystal. You've got balloons, frames, nests, all sorts of interesting things in here. Some of these will glow at night, which is also pretty cool. And so there's a lot of cool things. These trees are pretty popular to mark your base, and they also glow at night as well. So a lot of great features here in our decorative tools. There are also others depending on which maps you're on. If you are a builder and decorator, this is going to really make you happy. Everybody loves gotchas. They are not only very cute, adorable looking critters, but their ability to produce resources for free is also super handy. The problem with gotchas becomes that you are only able to place them near each other if they are a an opposite gender pair. So putting two male gotchas near each other, they're going to be unhappy. They're not going to produce any crystals. And that leads to people building ridiculously large and complicated gotcha towers in order to keep their pair separate from each other and still be able to produce all the resources. Thankfully with mods, we now have the Gotcha Gavager, which solves this problem. Right now, both of these gotchas are male gotchas, and they are sitting here in their little Gotcha Gavagers, but they are completely happy because the Gotcha Gavager keeps them from realizing that there is a same gendered gotcha next to them. So I could put down a whole bunch of these and fill them with my gotchas, fill my feeding troughs here with stone, 
set it to auto feed and it will continually feed my gotchas so that they produce all of their crystals. To go along with this, I have two items that are very helpful. First off is my item collector. My item collector, once it's up and running, is going to collect any items, including gotcha crystals. It will then take those gotcha crystals and it will send them to my crystal cracker. The crystal cracker will automatically open up those gotcha crystals before they expire and it will store all of the resources for you. This makes gotchas pretty much totally automated. If you have snow owls nearby, your item collector will also collect the owl pellets and it will distribute them to the gotchas automatically. Once you have your crystal cracker running here, it makes it super easy to get things out. It has a send to dedicated storage option. If you have any dedicated storages with the items produced inside, it will automatically send them to those dedicated storages. Any items that don't go to dedicated storages, you have the option to send them to an industrial grinder so that you can go ahead and grind them down for resources. This is probably the easiest way to set up a totally automated gotcha farm. Finally, let's take a look at some of our amazing mods that are available for breeding. Now, this is not meant to be an in-depth tutorial on how to breed. There are certainly many better qualified than I to go over that, but simply to take a look at some of the tools that are available to make breeding easier. And the first and most important of those is the best egg maker. This is a life changer for breeding. You no longer need to worry about the incubator. You don't need air conditioners. You don't need a ring of fires. Instead, all you need is the best egg maker. When you first set it up, I highly recommend that you go into the radio menu and enable auto gather eggs and also enable gestation eggs. Auto gather eggs will have it automatically pick up any fertilized eggs in its radius and gestation eggs will make it so that any animals that normally gestate and give live birth will instead produce an egg. So let's go ahead and test this out. I have my lovely parasaur pair here and I'm going to go in and turn on my female and have them produce an egg for me. Once the egg is laid, the best egg will automatically pick it up and put it in its inventory. All right, so it automatically picked up that egg. I'm gonna go ahead and turn you off. And we come back over here to our best egg. Now I have two eggs in here, one from a previous one, and you can see that this one over here is already just about fully incubated. This is my new one that just popped in there now. When I select an egg, I'm gonna see a bunch of stats. Now this one, you'll notice, says best egg failure. That's because one of the parents could not be found. In order for best egg to work at its best capability, it's important to have the original parents out within range so that it can detect all of their stats and details. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you want to use all of the features to their fullest, it is very helpful. So with this one, it can't find the parents, so it's just going with the basic stats that it has available. In order to hatch this egg, I'm going to go ahead and just throw it out of the incubator. And oh look, twins. So now I have my little critters here, and I'm just going to go ahead and make them stop following me. Now my second egg in here you'll notice looks a little different when I select it. This is because both parents are available. 
And these green stats are the best stats available. So I can see that I have a female baby. I could change it to male if I wanted. I'm going to leave it at female and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click make best egg. It's going to go ahead and make sure that baby has the highest stat points for every stat based on the parent stats. But that's not all. I'm going to select it again and I'm going to come down to toggle details. Here are the colors of the baby. Here are the colors of the parents. If I don't like my baby's colors, I can go into edit colors. I have all of these colors available. I have my color region zero selected. I'm going to make that light red. I'll leave that at cyan. Let's make you light yellow. And we're going to turn you to, let's go with near white for that one. And I'm going to save those colors. So now when I select this guy again and toggle details, here are the new colors for my baby. So now I can go in, kick him out, and, well, my lucky day, twins again. But now my babies have those custom colors that I chose for them. I had mentioned earlier about the dino tracker and that being very important. Um, as soon as my babies are hatched out, what I want to do is I want to go in, get my dino tracker. I'm going to put one of those inside its inventory and force it to consume it. You'll notice it now has the little blue map marker above it. That means that it is now able to be tracked with a teleporter or teleporter remote and I can retrieve it from anywhere on the map if I lose it. We'll let these babies sit here and grow up for a minute. Um, I can also go ahead and soul ball any that I want to imprint and remember that the soul balls will go ahead and automatically imprint for you. So the last thing to look at over here are the SS mutators and I have five of these set up. Mutators are fantastic for breeding. There is no more trying to wait ages and ages and ages for mutations. If you set up some mutators, they do require element to run, but when you go in and we look at our mode, this will send out a pulse of radiation that causes nearby dinos to lay mutated eggs or give birth to mutated offspring. So this will force a mutation. Now it doesn't guarantee which mutation, but it will force a mutation. Even better than that, these mutations stack. So if I set up all five of these and send out that mutation pulse, the dinos that it irradiates, when they get a mutation, they will have five mutations stacked into that instead of just one. So let's say I get that elusive melee mutation. Instead of just one point mutated in melee, I would get five at once. This significantly speeds up the breeding and mutating process. But wait, that's not all. If I go back into my inventory here, I have a change mode option. Your SS mutator can do a lot more than just giving mutations to babies. My next one is gender swap. If you are trying to get a pair of dinos or you have a baby that hatches out and it's the wrong gender from what you're looking for, you can swap the gender of nearby dinos using the mutator. Next up, we have grants a random gender to nearby genderless dinos. Um, this will take a dino that does not normally have a male or female gender and it will randomly assign a gender to that dino. Makes it easy to go in and breed things that normally wouldn't be able to breed. And that brings us to our next one. This next one grants the ability of dinos that normally can't breed and forces them to be able to breed. Very, very handy. I've used this with text riders makes it easy to breed up your own little army of things you normally wouldn't be able to. Next up we have the um, age freeze. This will stop nearby dinos from aging. 
Uh, this is great if you want a whole crop of little babies running around your base that do not grow up. And then we get into the fun stuff. This is the Corruptor. This will take a normal dino and turn it to its corrupted version from Extinction. However, keep in mind this will only work on dinos that are normally available as corrupted on that particular map. You can do the same for aberration dinos, to convert regular dinos to aberrant dinos, to X dinos, and to R dinos. And again, they must have an actual X, R, corrupted, whatever counterpart that would naturally spawn in order to do this. And then brings us back to our mutation pulse. So the SS mutators, one of the greatest tools for breeding and raising dinos ever, along with your best egg, they are going to make your life as a breeder a million times easier.